Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room. If you've looked at the ads for some of the new transceivers, or if you have a friend that has one, on many of them you can add an LCD screen and see a portion of an amateur radio band, or maybe all of a band. And there's a lot of useful information in that pen adapter. If your transceiver doesn't have that, and you'd like to add it, I have a gimmick that might help. Stay tuned. said I used a gimmick and the gimmick was simply a twisted pair of wires something that I had done many many years ago in the 1960s to connect to some circuits and I thought of it because in connecting um, a capacitor to the IF of a transceiver I found that it was difficult to find a value that didn't affect the performance of the transceiver. So this twisted pair allowed me to either have an inch or two or three that I needed and I could then kind of dial in the capacitance to couple to an SDR receiver. So this, the system is this, the twisted pair, one wire connects to the um, IF tap point. The other wire doesn't connect, it just floats. But that other end of that wire does connect to, uh, in my case, a BNC connector could be an SMA, could be whatever is convenient. It could be a phono jack. And then from there to the SDR receiver that I bought off of Amazon for $21, $22. And then into my uh, desktop computer or a Raspberry Pi uh, to run the software to create the pan adapter screen. And it works great. I really like, in fact, I like that better than the commercial one that I bought from a company I bought a, a pan adapter that matches one of the transceivers. And in fact, I like this system much better. And there's lots of great software out there. You just need to find the one that works with your computer and that you, that one that you, one that you like. So here are some slides of how I connected to an ICOM 7000. It was a bit complicated. I did find it online and I had to pry up a little cover to get into it but it wasn't all that bad. And I now I've done it on a couple of different transceivers and, and just takes a pencil soldering iron and just one wire tapped into that transceiver at the appropriate place. And that place is usually described in detail by someone on the internet who's, who's already done it. Anyway, let's look at those slides and here's what I did. The first thing I did was to remove the fan from the transceiver. Uh, the fan was in this spot the tap point was right next to it, so I wanted to get the fan out of the way so I could get my soldering iron into place. Uh, so it's a, a tap point, it happens to be a transistor that's underneath underneath a metal cover. So I had to get that metal cover uh, out of the way, and that turned out to be the hardest part of this, was to get the cover pried up and out of the way so that I could get my pencil soldering iron uh, in there and touch that transistor. Uh, just very quickly. Um, I didn't care much if the connection was uh, almost a cold solder joint. I just wanted to make it very quickly without doing any, any damage or having that solder flow onto something else, uh, which was one of my big concerns. I just needed to make a connection real quick, and that was that. Ultimately, I ended up taking the cover completely off and soldered um, the one wire down to that transistor, the other wire floats. So one wire makes a connection, um, the other wire floats, and the other wire then is connected at the other end, uh, in this case to some uh, coax. The wire used was 18 AWG, 18 gauge, um, a stranded, and it was from a power supply. I tinned the wires before I connected them, uh, did that to make the soldering faster, so heated them up, uh, heated up the wire, uh, flowed some solder onto it, uh, actually left a little bit of extra on uh, the wire so that when I put it down to the board or the uh, the connector, it was a fairly fast connection. My big concern was the board and having solder flow somewhere where I didn't want it. So I just wanted to make that connection to that transistor and, and get it out of there. So it was uh, tin the wire, 
stick it down on top of that transistor, take my soldering iron and just tap it until the solder starts to flow. As I said, it's almost a cold solder joint, but uh, what I just figured I had to make the connection fast. The other end of the wire then uh, connects to um, some coax, and in this case uh, it's some um, RG174, and that is fairly short because it has some capacitance too, so I, I uh, didn't want it to be really long. I, the tin wire then made connection with the center conductor. That coax cable uh, terminates into a B and C connector that's on the back of the transceiver or hangs out the back of the transceiver. The reason why I use B and C instead of SMA, uh, it was easier for me to make the solder connection and I did uh, really a crimp connection. Uh, I could have used a uh, phono jack, but for me it's easier to put on a crimp connector than anything else. So put that on and that's my B and C connector that then goes to the cable uh, that's relatively short to the very inexpensive SDR receiver, which is one of the, uh, it's like New Elect, N-O-O-E, uh, I think is the first three letters. In any case, they're $22 on eBay, sometimes even even cheaper. You connect it to your trans, uh, the uh, USB connector connects to the transceiver. Um, turn it. And You've got uh, a second receiver if you want, and you've also got a pen adapter. So as you tune uh, your transceiver, those signals also move, and you can uh, then spot signals, see if the band looks busy. As you can see, that's uh, 20 meters, and there's some activity going on. Uh, if you wanted to check out a relatively dead band uh, like 10 meters, this would be a fast way to do it. Anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you have not subscribed, uh, please do so. If you have a question, uh, please post that below as to exactly where to tap on the transceiver. I didn't describe that. There's lots of sources on the internet for where you connect uh, to an ICOM uh, 7000 for the first IF, which is at 124 megahertz. And, and as I said, most every transceiver, someone's already done it. Anyway, Thanks for watching 73. I'm Jim W6LG. See you the next time.